Hi, and uh, welcome to SFU Math uh, 232. This is uh, section 4.6, uh, Matrix of a Linear Mapping. So just prior to this, we've learned that uh, we can represent a vector uh, as in in different bases. So what we what we what we I'm just going to go to the side here just to sort of review what we have uh, done regarding different bases so far. And that is we've considered the fact that if we have some vector, let's just pick this vector here in R2, that this means if there's nothing here, we assume it means with respect to the standard basis. So it means two of the first standard basis vector plus three of the second standard basis vector. Now what we've, we've learned is that I'm going to call the standard basis vectors here uh, S, the set S. So there, there, there they are there. And then what we've learned how to do is, is take a different basis. Let's just call it B. We can have some different basis vectors, 1, 1, say, and who knows, minus 1, 1, there. That would be a different basis. And that we can then figure out to what coordinates should we put here. That's 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 what we've been doing. What coordinates should we put here so that this vector will be some, let's just call this alpha and beta, some amount of the first basis vector plus some other amount of the second basis vector. So what we're doing is we're saying the coordinates of the vector are telling you what linear combination of the basis vectors you are choosing. And we've learned how to go back and forth uh, for vectors. That was the previous lecture. So possibly a good idea to review that if you're not sure how to do that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to recognize that we can represent the matrix of a linear mapping in a different basis as well. So not just can we represent the vectors in a different basis, but we can also represent the linear maps in a different basis. Okay, so let's uh, let's go slowly here. Um, mostly going to uh, try to explain the basic theory. It's actually not that difficult in some sense, in that the procedure is relatively straightforward. But what you really want to be thinking hard about is when you write something down, what basis is it relative to? Because that's the key to keeping everything straight, so that uh, uh, you can um, give the transformation matrix in one or a different basis. Okay, so we're going to start, we're going to have uh, here, we're going to have a transformation, a linear map, L, we're going to call that L, and it's going to be from Rn to Rn. Okay, let's just, let me just, just have slightly different uh, notation here, but uh, that that <clears throat> that is the, what I tend to write like that. We're going from Rn to Rn. Uh, first thing to notice is that the vector spaces are the same in that the in that the domain and codomain are the same vector space. Okay, so that's what we're going to always have here when we're going to be changing the basis of our linear mapping. The the domain and codomain will be the same vector space. Okay. So, uh we have a, a standard matrix of a linear transformation and that has until now always been relative to the standard basis of Rn. And we figure that out by, we, we find the matrix of the linear transformation by observing what the linear transformation does to each one of the basis vectors. And then we put those in as columns into the matrix. And here we're, we're going to be starting to add the subscript S because we're talking rate as of yet a linear map relative to the standard basis vectors. We don't we normally leave that off um, and it's assumed if there's no basis indicated. But because now we're working with a change of basis, I'm going to be trying to use that subscript S to indicate I mean relative to the standard uh, basis vectors. So I could in fact do that right here too. I could say this is relative to the standard basis vectors, and this is relative to the standard basis vectors, and this is relative to the standard basis vectors. Okay, so let's just take a quick 
um, example of that, uh, and that this is not new yet. This is just a linear transformation, and we're going to find the matrix relative to the standard basis vector. So let's just take a, a simple uh, linear map that goes from R3 uh, to R3. Okay, so the do domain and codomain of this linear map is R3. And here's the here's the mapping here. There it is. Okay, so now I want to write down the matrix of this linear transformation, and it's going to be relative to the standard basis vectors. So what I can do is, first off, I think in the last lecture we saw that, in fact, you can probably write this right out of your head, but what I am thinking is, is I'm thinking what happens to the first basis vector. I compute that out. That would be um, uh, 1, uh, 0, 0. Okay, so I'm implying this rule to the first basis vector. Then I'm going to apply that same rule to the next basis vector and see what happens. That's going to be 1, uh, 2, 0. And then I'll apply it to the third basis vector. And I get, uh, I get to 0, 0, 1. Okay, so then I write that. Um, I, I, those become the uh, columns of this matrix here. Those that would be the first column would be one zero zero. The second column one two zero. The third column. Uh, let's let's fix this. This is three times, not one time. So that should be a three there. So that's uh, zero zero three. Okay. You can check this. In fact, why don't we just do that right now? There's that, and then the some vector in in R3 has three components. The, an arbitrary vector in R3 looks like that. I can now take that and multiply it by this. Now I'm going to write this like this again. That, that would be assumed if I didn't, but because we're about to change that, I'm, I'm making x, I'm emphasizing that x is relative to the standard basis vectors. So I should be able to take L times S and multiply it by X relative to S. And let's see what happens. I should get back my transformation. Otherwise, I'm going to have to reevaluate my calculations here. So let's let's do that and make sure there's not a mistake at this point. And that comes out to be what the first row is X1 plus X2. And the second row is 2x2, and the third row is 3x3. Okay. And that is the matrix of the linear transformation of x, which is simply the linear transformation here, x1. I'm taking it from right here in, in these rows. Okay. That is this statement right here. I've sort of I've I've taken an example. I've 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 formed this here. I've written them in as columns, and I've showed you that this is the case for this specific linear transformation. And it is the case um, for all linear transformations. So now what we're going to do is try to understand uh, what happens when we use a different basis, not the standard basis, and uh, the. Use of non-standard bases is is not just a mathematical <laughs> complication uh, um, to to make things more complicated. Um, it is something that is frequently done uh, relative to the problem that you're trying to solve. So what happens is you're attempting to solve a certain physics problem and or something like that, and the the problem is oriented in a certain way that it makes sense to align the basis vectors in a certain manner. The textbook actually does quite a nice job of explaining this. They're, they're, they're saying, um, what does it mean? Uh, like, what does, for example, certain geometric operations mean, like reflection? If you're reflecting um, across an arbitrary plane, it makes sense to pick the basis vectors in the plane because then you can really easily see what happens with the reflection. If you use the standard basis vectors and the, and, and the plane is not um, aligned with the standard basis, uh, is, is not one of the x, y, x, z, or y, z planes, then it makes it much more difficult to see what's happening. Whereas if you align the 
the uh, uh, the the basis vectors with the geometry of the problem, it, it makes it much easier to see uh, what is going on. So that is our our basic motivation here. So we're gonna try to generalize the, the matrix representing the transformation to an arbitrary basis. And we're gonna call that basis B. Okay, so we have uh, this, we have some number of vectors, which is a basis for Rn. We have n vectors, they're linearly independent and they form a basis for Rn. Now, the matrix of the linear mapping with respect to this new basis is defined this way. The matrix with respect to the basis B is the linear transformation of each vector in the basis relative to the basis with coordinates relative to the basis. I mean, if pause momentarily here, maybe stop the video and say to yourself, I'm going to think about what it means. What, what is this uh, when uh, B is the standard basis? And you will see actually that this is exactly what we did with the standard basis vectors. Now all we're doing is we are changing it to the new basis vectors. Okay, so we're gonna figure out how do we calculate this guy. We have to do one thing extra before we can write this out. We have to calculate the coordinates of each one of the vectors in the basis B. Okay, so let's 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 do this via example. So here's a, a transformation, a linear map called T, and it's it's a it's a linear map from R2 to R2. Okay, and that and that's the rule right there. Okay, so f first thing that you could uh, probably do here is write out what the um this guy here, write out what the transformation is relative to the standard basis. This is not new. In fact, let's just do that, okay? We're, we'll, we'll, we'll do this guy first. It doesn't have a subscript, but so this guy here with, with no subscript is the same as writing, what is the matrix that represents this linear transformation relative to the standard basis vectors? This is exactly um, like the example I, I just did. That is going to, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll write it slightly differently so we can see just another way of doing it. But you could stop the video, actually form this matrix yourself, and then then just restart and make sure that it's correct. That would be a good way of checking that you're following so far uh, what's going on. Okay, so that is going to be the transformation of the first basis vector. Uh, and then the next column uh, will be the transformation of the second basis vector. So let's think about what that is. Uh, this linear transformation, I'm thinking, what is the transformation of E1? That is the transformation of 1, 0. And that is going to be, uh, let's see, uh, x1, 3, and x1, 2, there. And then I do the same thing, that's E1. And then what is the transformation of E2? That is the transformation of 0, 1, and that is, um, two, three. Okay, so now I can write what T is. And again, this is the transformation relative to the standard basis vectors. This is what we've always been doing. That is three, two, two, three. All right, now what's new and what I want to do is I want to find the transformation re matrix relative to a new basis. Okay, and I've, I've, I've put the vectors here that are going to be our new basis. So we have two linearly independent vectors in R2. So this is um, a basis and, it, well, it's, they're linearly independent and there's two vectors, it spans R2. So th these, do, these two uh, vectors, in fact, are a, we can just do a quick mental check. They are indeed a basis for R2. They're not the standard basis vectors. So what we're going to do is we are going to first compute. So step one is going to be compute the transformation of the basis vectors. 
So I have a, a, a transformation. I want to calculate what are the transformation of the basis vectors in the basis I want to represent the transformation in. Oh, well, that'll be step one. So let me just go ahead and do that. That is T of V1. Uh, that is going to be T of, and what is V1? V1 is uh, one over root two minus one over root two. And my transformation is this guy here. And so I performed that three times this plus two times that and I get one over root two. And then I do, uh, to calculate uh, this next uh, component here, I do two times this guy here, plus three times this guy here. And I get here, minus one over root two. Okay, then I'll, I'll do the same thing with the second vector. This is akin, exactly akin to doing this here, okay? I did it with the standard basis vectors. Now I'm doing it with the new basis vectors, same exact operation. Okay, and that is going to be uh, here, the transformation of one over root two, uh, one over root two. Okay, V1 and V2 are a little bit similar. Be, ca be careful, right? It'd be kind of easy to mix them up. So one of them's got a negative sign, the other one does not. So make sure you understand which vector I'm using at which point. So I get here when I do that, I get five um, over root two and five over root two. Okay, that's that step one. Now what we wanna do, we've got what happens to those two basis vectors. Now we wanna compute the coordinates of those vectors with respect to the basis B. Okay, so this is step two. Compute the coordinates of these vectors, meaning these, these two guys right here, these vectors, with respect, with respect to the basis B. Okay, so how do we go about doing that? This is, in fact, this is just coordinates with respect to a basis, the previous the previous topic that we we just covered. So I will sort of ind I will I will actually I will indicate a little bit more detail than that. But what are we doing? We are doing a change of uh, basis, and what we are doing is we are we've called this. We have had this situation here. If we want to change from uh, basis B to basis B prime, we have. Uh, set up the augmented matrix like this. We have row reduced it, and then until until the first part is the identity matrix, and then we have proved that the, the right-hand side here is the matrix that transforms B um, uh, into B prime, vectors in basis B into B prime. Now, in this case, this guy here is our standard basis vector. Okay, we're not we're not going from one non-standard basis to another standard basis fortuitously. <laughs> we're we're going from the the standard basis vectors uh, to uh, an, another basis. Okay, so I I what I am doing here is I am transforming from what I call so this is a general this is a general statement right here, but what I am doing in this specific example is going from what I have called going from I to B like that, okay? So I am setting up the augmented matrix in the following manner, one over root two, one over root two, minus one over root two, one over root two. Those are the two basis vectors in the new basis. And here are the basis vectors in the original uh, uh, basis. And the original basis is in fact, the standard basis, okay? I go like this and I go through the row reduction steps until I am here. And I get this guy right here, one over root two. You, I would highly recommend stopping the video, doing the row reductions and making sure that you uh, get, the same, get the same result here, okay? That is the transformation matrix to, to take a vector from the standard basis to the new basis. But let's also look at what this what this 
is as well, if I think about this in a slightly different manner, we have in fact seen this exact procedure before in a different context. And this would be how I would find the inverse of a matrix. I would do exactly the same thing. I would take the matrix I wanted to find an inverse of, and I would augment it with the standard, uh, with the identity matrix. You notice the identity matrix is simply the standard basis with the, uh, the standard basis vectors as columns. It gives you the identity matrix. This is standard basis vector number one, standard basis vector number two. They are the two columns in the identity matrix. And if I do this, and I do this, then uh, we have seen uh, and and shown that it is always true that when we do this, this guy here is in fact the inverse of this guy here. So that means in fact, when I do this right here, I am getting to here. So I can call this thing here, my change of coordinates matrix, which it is. And in fact, uh, it's 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 better than it, I'm I'm here. It's transformed to I. Uh, in this case, it's P. Um, the new basis is B, and the original basis is S. So I'm here. Okay. So this thing here, uh, I can call it B to the minus one, or I can label it as this transformation matrix. Okay. So I'm going to call this B to the minus one. So I am now here, I've got B to the minus one is this guy right here. Um, minus one half, uh, one half, sorry, minus one, one over root two, one over root two and minus one, uh, one, one over root two. Okay, I'm just caught, I just copied this guy right here. So now I am gonna apply that change of basis metric ma matrix to my two vectors that I have previously computed th that are these two guys right here. Okay. First, I applied my transformation to my basis vectors. Now I'm going to take those th that, that transformed result and I am going to represent it in my basis B. In order to do that, I need to change it from the standard basis to the basis B. So that looks like this. Um, the the transformation applied to v1 in the basis b is the change of transformation matrix multiplied by the transformation of v both of these things we've now computed so i, I won't write it out both times but for, for first this one i'll write out And then I'm going to multiply that by this guy right here. 1 over root 2 minus 1 over root 2. And I get that to be 1, 0. I'll do this ex exactly the same thing for the second vector. That is going to be e to the minus 1 t b1. And so I, I, I'm going to make this calculation again, but I'm going to do it with, sorry, this is going to be V2, that I'm going to do it with the second vector. When I do that, I get the vector 0, 5. Again, good thing to stop and just check these calculations as we're going along so that you can keep track of what's going on. Now, just like I did before, I, when I want to represent the transformation in a matrix, I find out what happens to the basis vectors. And in this case, I have the additional step of saying, I need to represent those basis vectors. That, sorry, I need to represent the transformation of those basis vectors in the new basis. I put those things in the matrix as columns. So I now have got the result that I was looking for here, that the transformation that we had listed above relative to the new basis vectors that we stated is this guy right here. Column one, one zero, column two, zero five. That is the that is the result right there. Now let us let us just uh, check this uh, situation and and see if we believe uh, what happened. 
Okay, so that's, I think, an, a nice thing to do. In fact, you could try it with a different factor than I'm going to try it with and see whether you can get it to work both ways. And that, that'll give you some confidence in the procedure. I'm going to just pick a vector here. I'm going to call that vector W. W will be the vector uh, minus 2, 5. Okay. So this is a check. Minus 2, 5. Then I am going to find out what is the transformed, what is the transformation of W. I am just merely applying the algebraic uh, uh, rule that we have. That is, a, I am applying, I'm just going to roll back here. Um, I'm applying this guy right here. Right? I have a vector. I'm going to apply the transformation to it. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. That is going to be uh, minus 6 plus 10 and minus 4 plus 15. And that will be 411. All right. So that is the... That is the vector of the transformation applied to W. Okay, now I am going to Well, I'm pausing here momentarily while I think I, I am going to actually what I'm going to do before I do this, just to try to really bring home what's happening here. I think what I'll do is that this is this is method one, but also consider that this exact same computation, I'm not doing anything different. I'm going to just make the computation in a different way, could could be performed in this manner. I take the matrix that represents the linear transformation, T, and I multiply it by the vector. I actually find this way easier. And I get, of course, the same thing. I get 4 and 11. OK, that, that is the calculation that I just did. OK, now I'm going to take a look at the doing the same thing on the in the new in the new basis. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is take the vector w currently represented in the standard basis and represent it in the new basis. How do I do that? I apply the change of basis matrix to the vector. So this is transform this is finding the coordinates of w with respect to the new basis so i take the inverse of b that is this is my change of basis matrix i take that that is this here and i apply that matrix to the vector I try really hard not to make any arithmetic mistakes, and I get this guy here. Now that you guys are learning how to use MATLAB, I would suggest actually while you're practicing, you practice by doing something by hand, and then you quickly just enter it into MATLAB and see whether the calculation is correct. If it isn't, you look quickly back and go, oh, I see where I made a mistake. That you'll that you'll pick up a bunch of your own errors in that way. And also, if you find out that it, you have a wrong answer, but your calculation is correct, then you then that's a more important one to find because then you're like, hey, I've actually calculated the wrong thing uh, as opposed to I've made arithmetic on the calculation, an arithmetic mistake on the calculation. So that I think would be a useful thing now that we know how to enter matrices and vectors, we know how to multiply them together. So that, I think that is something that would be useful. Okay, so I get to this guy here. So that is the transformed version of W in basis B. Now, how else could I calculate that? I could take the transformation in B and multiply it by the, uh, the vector represented in the basis in, in B. So I now I've moved the, uh, the linear map and the vector are now both relative to the basis vectors in the basis B. I'm going to multiply those two guys together. I get 1005. That was what I calculated. And then I'm going to multiply that by this guy here, minus 7 over root 2. That is W in B. Looks like that. I go ahead with that, and I get this guy here, minus 7 over 
root two and 15 over root two. Now, what I'm going to do to compare, so th this, is, this is my result here. Now I wanna compare, this should be the same as taking the transformation in the standard basis vectors and then representing that result in B. And that would be taking B to the minus one, the inverse of B, that is our change of basis matrix and applying it to the result for 11. That computation looks like this. One over root two minus one over root two, one over root two, one over root two. And that is four times 11. And I get this result here. I highly encourage you, strongly encourage you to take another vector, just pick a vector. Uh, I, I, I picked W here, which is minus two, five, but pick something else. Just pick, a, a, a call it something else, who knows? Call it R, pick something else, uh, pick something not too big, minus one and three, and try the whole procedure again. Can I figure out what the, trans, what the transformation applied to this vector looks like in the basis B. Do it both ways and you should get the same result, basically following this exact procedure. Asking yourself each time when you write down a matrix, which matrix is this? Why am I using this matrix? Which side should I, which side, which side should I multiply on? And it should do exactly like this. It should come out to be exactly the same result. This starred result here is the same as this starred result right here. That is basically, the, that. this is it actually. This is the whole, <laughs> the whole thing in one, in one fell swoop. We're just gonna say a, a, a few other things. We're gonna just talk about what is the relationship between the transformation, between a transformation represented in the standard basis and a transformation uh, represented in a new basis B. Okay, again, we notice that we have a linear operator and that the domain and codomain are the same vector space. S is, we're going to call here the standard basis, and B is any other basis. Okay, we have the matrix P we've identified above as the change of coordinate uh, matrix uh, from uh, B to S. We've got that right here. And we then uh, have this here, a way of succinctly writing down what we are doing in order to generate the linear transformation in basis B versus what the linear transformation looks like in basis S. And it's, that is a statement uh, right there. Okay, in fact, uh, there's a whole little variation on the theme here, but that is the right here. And this is What we have here. So let's take a look. Uh, all the subscripting and whatever. So let's 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 look what what this means. Here, this means right here. What what is that? That is start with x in b coordinates. So that's the vector x, the coordinates of the vector x with respect to b, and then we change to S, to S coordinates. Okay, that now what we have after, after these two steps, we have X now represented relative to S. Then we act on that vector with the transformation relative to S. We've got the vector relative to S, so we operated on it with a matrix relative to S. Okay, so this is act on on the, uh, our vector uh, with the transform relative to S. Okay, and then if we want to uh, know 
or what where we are, what the coordinates of our result are in basis B, then we change the answer. This final part of this with this formula here is to say change the answer into into coordinates. And let's write that down. Change the answer into B coordinates. Okay, so this is, this here is, let's take a look at what this is. That, that is what I just, uh, well, um, yeah, so here, let's, let's, let's notice the, these two statements here, there. <clears throat> what are we doing? This is the calculation in S coordinates. So we can do the calculation in the coordinates of the vector of, of B, or we can do the calculation in the coordinates of S. And 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 we can match those up by uh, taking the calculation in B and then uh, changing it uh, so changing the changing the vector x from the basis b to the basis s and then multiplying by the transformation in s we and we can also do the calculation in b and then change the coordinates to s either way but what we have to do is when we apply a transformation matrix that and we apply it to a vector the transformation matrix and the vector have to be represented in the same basis. Otherwise, things will not work. OK, so let's just go ahead and make this calculation uh, uh, for our previous example to sort of see what's going on here. So we have got uh, a situation where we are um, we are taking B, and we've now been calling this S, and we are, we have transformed, uh, we have done row reduction here to find out that this is then I, and this is uh, B to the minus one, okay? We know what uh, um, B is. B is the basis vectors. of the basis B, okay? There, those guys right there, we've already done this. We augmented that with this and we row reduced and we got this. We're making the same calculation we did in the, in the previous example, but now we're gonna do it by multiplying together three matrices. That is the plan. That is B to the minus one. And B, well, we've got B, it's right here. That is B, and that is B to the minus one. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take, as per this guy here, we are going to take B to the minus one. We're gonna multiply it by the transformation, and then we are going to multiply that by B. Okay, so we've got here B to the minus one, We've got our transformation. And then we are going to multiply here by B. So let's just look back to what the what the theorem is saying. We have our statement here. Uh, let's see, theorem, here it is. We're, let me just highlight this in a color. I'm doing this exact computation right here this guy right here. The linear transformation relative to B is bracketed either side with the, the, the change of basis matrix. And then we have the linear transformation in the standard basis. And that is exactly what I have written down here. 
Okay, then the, the naming is a little bit different. Uh, so the textbook, I mean, that it's just, it, it's a matter of uh, just naming. I mean, it, it, this, it looks like this in the theorem, but this is the same, the same thing. Uh, our our uh, change of basis matrices have been called B to the minus one and B rather than P and P to the minus one. And our linear transformation is called T uh, rather than L. But this is the same exact calculation. That is just a naming thing. I'd make this calculation Let's, let's just at least write out uh, one intermediate step here. I get this here, one over uh, root two minus one over root two, five, root two, five over root two. And then I multiply that. So I multiply these two matrices together first, and then I'm gonna multiply by this um, third matrix here. And then I will get this precisely, precisely what we got uh, before by going sort of a little bit more methodically step by step and identifying what each thing is. Now we have a way of putting this together. And in fact, once you understand this, what's going on, then it is becomes actually quite straightforward to do this calculation because what you can do is simply uh, when you understand that this calculation, what this calculation is really doing for you, it is extremely straightforward to get that. And that is this guy right here. And we got that right away. Uh, we know how to do that. We also already know how to calculate uh, what, what these two things are. We know how to find a change of basis matrix. So we have, once we have those two items in hand, we've gone through an example in detail where we, we don't compact everything together. And then we see why we can compact it all together. Then forevermore, you could just use this uh, uh, format here, and you will be able to get the same result uh, that we got from before, which is, I'm just going to show you where that is. I'm winding up. It is right here. Well, let's see. In fact, it's, let's, this is where it first appeared, right here. That is what we wanted. The transformation matrix in the basis B. Let me, in fact, just label this. This is the transformation matrix in the label in the in the basis B. And so that right here is the transformation matrix in the basis B. Okay. We started with it in the basis S, and then we applied these two change of basis matrices. That, folks, is all. Um, so I will uh, in class uh, tomorrow. I will do. A, another example of this. I'll just pick a completely different example. We're going to go through it again. Thanks a lot. I'll see you then.